bringing old ships to life. Hello everybody, it's Jamie from Old Shipping Lines as you all know and welcome back to a new video. Today we shall talk about the sinking of the Russian vessel, the SS Admiral Nakimov. I'm very excited for this episode, so with that out of the way guys, sit back and enjoy. So the ship was formerly known as the SS Berlin for the German company the North German Lloyd, who built other famous liners, such as the SS Europa and the SS Bremen. But back to the Berlin. She was built by the Bremer Vulcan Company in Bremen, Germany, and she was completed in September 1925. She measured 174.3 meters long and 21 meters wide and she was fitted with 2.3 cylinder triple expansion engines which would run a speed up to 16 knots she was capable of carrying 1.100 passengers and measured in at 17.053 cross registered tons she entered service in mid-September 1925 for the company's Bremen to New York service. But soon she made headlines for the newspapers when she was involved as a rescue ship in the sinking of the SS Vestris of the Lamport and Holt Limited. She and two other merchant ships as well as the US battleship Wyoming assisted in the rescuing of the remaining survivors. In 1932, the ship underwent a refit, which reduced her capacity down to 879 and remained on the North Atlantic service and she would make cruises to the West Indies. She soon changed departures to New York in Cook's Haven and was later charted by a Nazi party in 1939 for the Streng through Joy program. As a part of the German labor front set up in 1933 and used as a tool to promote Nazism to the German people. She was laid up in the winter of 1938 before making her last cruises in May 1939. The ship was requisitioned by the Kriegsmarine on August the 23rd, 1939 and would service in Norwegian waters. Berlin continued to be used as a transport in the Baltic Sea and when not transporting in the Baltic Sea, she would be stationed in Copenhagen as a floating hospital. On January the 31st, 1945, the ship was transporting refugees when she struck a mine and had to be under tow when she struck another mine and sank at 23.53 hours in shallow waters. Any salvageable equipment was removed on February the 5th and the ship was virtually abandoned after that. So this is basically where her life as a German liner ended. After the war, the Soviets had taken possession of the wreck and work began as early as December 1946. However, when the ship was partially raised in early 1947, an unknown explosion occurred sinking the ship once more and almost crushing a diver who managed to escape. The Soviets made a second attempt on September the 17th 1947 and this time they were successful and by this point the ship had already received her new name, the Admiral Anakimov and restoration work started in 1949 
and would last 8 years and was finally delivered to the Black Sea Shipping Company in May 1957 and placed to service in the Black Sea from Odessa Batum and would carry an average of around a thousand passengers per voyage and remained as flagship for the company until future ships entered service. Now in 1962 the ship would be used as a transport for soldiers to Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis where her service was rough but went without any political conflict. She would continue her regular service after the crisis was averted and would continue service for the next 24 years. And now we shall move on to her final voyage. On August the 31st 1986 the ship would make her last departure, departing from and my Russian pronunciation is terrible so I'm sorry if I say the place, the name of the place wrong. So the ship would depart from Novoroysk en route for Sochi with 897 passengers on board and 346 crew. Now she was scheduled to push away from dock at 10 pm and she was actually already moving with the help of a tug when the order came for her to stop. She was being delayed on account of some rather important passengers. These were KGB Major General Krikunov, his wife, their daughter and their 8 year old grandson. Krikunov was the head of the KGB in Odessa. Someone you probably feel compelled to hold a boat for if asked. Just after a few minutes from departure the ship's pilot noticed the 18.600 ton bulk carrier Pietor Vasev, which was built in Japan in 1981 and acquired by the Russians in 1984. The pilot on board the Admiral Nakimov radioed the Pietor Vasev. However, they responded, don't worry, we'll pass clear of each other. To which, delighted, the captain of the Admiral Akimov left for his cabin, leaving the second officer in command. The captain of the Pietor Vasev didn't change course, being confident that they would pass each other, and the Admiral Akimov would radio the oncoming ship multiple times, requesting that they should change course. Eventually, the Pietor Vasev altered course 10 degrees to port side. However, disaster was set. At 23.10 hours, the second officer yelled out on the radio, Immediately reverse full stern, as it was clear that the freighter was headed directly for the passenger ship. As the engines of the Pietor Vasev roared, as her engines were thrown into reverse, the Abron Akimov turned hard to port. However, the efforts of both ships were futile. At 23.12 hours, Pietor Vasev, at a speed of 5 knots, rammed into the Nakimov, which was still in motion, causing a hole of 84 square meters, which opened the boiler room and engine room to the cold water. Her lights went out almost immediately on impact, awakening passengers below decks in the dark, unable to turn on their lights as they feel the list to starboard gradually increasing. Passengers were seen jumping into the pitch black ocean filled with oil as lifeboats couldn't be prepared in time and chaos would rise as passengers panicked in fear and 
confusion for seven long minutes until the ship went down. The Pieter Vasev wasn't fatally damaged and would assist in the rescue efforts. Other ships would arrive around 10 minutes later and a total of 64 ships of various types and 20 helicopters rushed to the scene and despite the rapid sinking of 1243 on board the ship, 407 died. But it took over 19 hours until the last survivors were pulled out of the water. Another reason for the rapid sinking of the ship was because the ship's ventilations were out of commission, resulting in more than 19 portholes left open in the cabins, which contributed to the sinking. The wreck lies on her starboard side in waters 150 feet or 46 meters deep and out of the dead only 240 bodies were recovered. After the sinking the government formed a commission of inquiry into the investigation of the sinking and who was responsible for the sinking and loss of life. However, shockingly, the inquiry determined that the captain of the Pietor Vasev and Admiral Akimov had not followed proper safety protocols to avoid the sinking. In reality, the Pietor Vasev was at fault here, as the ship ignored orders to slow their ship, despite the multiple warnings sent by the Nakimov, and only did so when it became clear. And not only that, the ship didn't report the incident 40 minutes after it occurred. The only reason the captain of the Nakimov was convicted was because he had left his second officer to the bridge. Both captains were sentenced to 15 years in prison and both were released in 1992. And that is the end of a episode my friends. Did you guys like it? I certainly loved making it. As you all know, the RMS Empress of Ireland is my favorite ship. But the Admiral Nakimov has certainly a place in my heart, in my top 10 shipwrecks. She's kind of forgotten. Uh, outside of Russia, uh, there are not many people that know this wreck. Which is quite a shame, because she had such an eventful life. Uh, she basically died twice. First as a German liner, and secondly as a Russian liner. So, uh, yeah, that's, I hope that she will get more attention. Uh, maybe a detailed book, or maybe a very good detailed documentary. Who knows? Um, but I think that more people deserve, or more people should know the story of this shipwreck. Uh, I quickly also want to take a moment to, to thank all my new subscribers. Um, it really means a lot to me that you watch my content. But, of course, we are now trying to reach the 800 subscribers. And we are extremely close. So, if you have friends who like ocean liners or ships, please show them my channel. Um, we are very close to 800 subscribers and I know we can do that together. If you have any comments or thoughts on this video, please leave them in the description down below. I love reading your comments and I reply to each and every one of them. So again, if you have any comments or thoughts, please leave them in the comments. And uh, yeah, with that out of the way, guys, have a good night or day wherever you are. Stay safe and stay happy. And we will see each other on the next one. Goodbye. Follow old shipping lines on social media. Thanks for watching.